Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel with a new video about uh, tutorials. Uh, it's the episode 202 dedicated to armor and penetration mechanics in World of Tanks. I will cover all the theory, so how it works, some in-game examples. I will also give you some tips and how to improve directly uh, from what we've learned in this video. However, I will not develop some advanced strategies such as uh, say scraping, hold on and so on just because they would deserve another video else this one would be too crowded with information. So let's start in the garage. Um, I have plenty of tanks so I will just select a few of them to give you some ideas about uh, the armor values and the penetration values. So for example the Leopard one which is a tier 10 medium tank has a very very poor armor um, whether uh, it's on the front side or rear and even the turret is poorly armored so 70 millimeters on the front uh, it's really really low at tier 10 however the penetration value on this tank is pretty high at the lowest with the regular ammunition it's 201 and at the highest it's 335 so those values are pretty high actually so whenever you're buying a tank uh, just check those values the armor you have on all sides uh, on your turret and so on and what's the penetration of your gun it's really important here the E75 which is a tier 9 heavy uh, German tank and as you can see the armor values are much better even on the side you will still get 120 millimeters which is pretty good but frontally uh, 160 or 200 millimeters on the turret it's just brutal the tortoise is also another story, because as a tank destroyer it doesn't have a turret, so you will see only 4 values. So um, knowing the average value of penetration of your gun and all um, the armor values of your tank and also of the enemy tanks, it will help you a lot, because you will see if they are heavily armored or not, if it's just on the front or if it's also on the sides and rear, because sometimes you'll have heavily armored flanks and rear. So you'll have to know those values, it will help you a lot to make decisions during battle. Here you'll have a funny example with the Waffentrager E100, an extremely well protected hull, but a terrible armor on the turrets. So each tank is different, I get to know them, it will be very helpful. And directly in the statistics of the tank, uh, you can just see the average penetration, so here for the E75, it's uh, 246, which is pretty good, and it will give you a rough estimation of what you can penetrate or not in the game. So in the game, um, you'll have to compare uh, your penetration versus the armor of your target, and it will basically say if you penetrate or not, and if you do penetrate, you will deal a lot of damage to your target. So we will see a very simple example uh, in-game of um, a gun that can easily penetrate the armor of the opponent. So you're going to see a lightly armored tank going to be destroyed by a powerful gun. It's as simple as that. If you have enough penetration, you can penetrate anywhere and you will deal damage and kill your target. But the reality is not that simple. And what I want to do is to explain to you all of the different steps that occur uh, between the moment you fire your shot and the moment uh, the shell impacts on the enemy armor. The first step is how the RNG or random number generation will affect your penetration value. Imagine that your tank has an average uh, value of penetration of 100. As soon as you fire, the game will modify this value up to plus 25 or minus 25 percent. So the result could be between 75 and 125. Then for AP and APCR types of shell, um, the shell will lose penetration value over distance. So if you're shooting at a target, let's say 200 meters, your shell will lose a lot of penetration power. And if you shoot at a target at very close range or point blank range, you will maintain your initial penetration value. Remember that AP and APCR shells can go through obstacles and still penetrate a target behind it, however you will lose again some more uh, penetration, meanwhile you are destroying uh, the obstacle. Let's see an example in-game in which an AMX 5100 will go behind a wall and get shot through this wall. Now let's see how high explosive shells behave, it's really different. First, they do not rely on speed for their penetration value, which means that no matter what the distance, they will keep their same penetration value. However, 
they detonate on impact, which means that if you are firing through a destructible obstacle, the shell will just explode on this destructible obstacle, and obviously you're not going to damage the target behind it. Well, mostly because high explosive shells get an area of effect, but it's rather small, so if the target is, let's say, half a meter behind the obstacle, he won't take any damage. Now, before continuing to the third step, which is the normalization, you need to understand a vital concept in World of Tanks, which is basically armor and angle. Imagine that you fire a shell through a um, perfectly vertical and flat surface. What uh, your shell would have to go through is exactly uh, the thickness of this uh, armor. Look at the black arrow below this uh, vertical armor. Now, if we shoot at the very same armor, but this time it's not vertical, it's angled, then you will see that the amount of armor that your shell will have to penetrate is much higher. And you can see that uh, with the black arrow. Let me show you that again so you see the difference with the same shell, the same distance, the same armor, everything is identical except for the angled. It's completely different and it's taken into account in World of Tanks, so you definitely need to understand this if you want to play efficiently in World of Tanks and you also need to understand this for what's coming next, the normalization effect. When your shell go through an angled armor, there's an automatic normalization that happens that will make the shell go at a better angle automatically and the amount of angle that you will get depends on the type of shell so basically an AP shell will have automatically 5 degrees of normalization which will make the angled armor slightly less effective APCR shells get 2 degrees of normalization and high explosive shells never get any. So take that into account, uh, it's really important, it will give you a slight advantage when you're firing uh, armor piercing shells. So after taking into account the normalization, uh, the game will tell you if you have an automatic ricochet or not. If you're firing an AP or an APCR with an angle superior to 70 degrees to your target, uh, your shell will automatically ricochet the, the armor, so you will not even get a chance to penetrate. And this angle takes into account the bonus from the normalization. Let's see an example directly in-game with my uh, E50M versus an enemy Bachat. So basically my shell had the penetration value uh, for the armor of the bad shot, but uh, since it was too angled, it was an automatic ricochet. So now, what is an overmatch? Basically, if your gun caliber exceeds three times the thickness of the enemy armor, then you cannot ricochet. For example, if it was a shell from a Jagdpanzer E100 instead of my E50M, the shell would have penetrated and killed that opponent. After the normalization and all the ricochet or overmatch uh, mechanic, uh, if your shell has the possibility to penetrate the enemy armor, then the game will calculate the effective armor of the opponent. It only means that it will take into account the angle of the armor uh, in order to say which thickness you will have to penetrate. So let's take an example. If you are firing at a target with no angle, so basically he is uh, showing a flat surface to you, then his effective armor will be equal to his regular armor. But if he is angled, then as we have seen previously, you will have to penetrate more armor thickness, so his effective armor will be much more important than his regular armor. So remember, effective armor is just the regular armor, but taking into account the angle of impact of your shell after the normalization effect. And then the game will simply compare your final penetration, so including RNG, distance and obstacles, versus uh, the effective armor of the opponent. And if the penetration is higher, then you will penetrate. If not, you will simply not penetrate the opponent. So now let's see a few in-game examples. I am now facing a Tiger 2, which is a much stronger opponent. And he has a very good frontal armor, much better than my penetration value. So no matter where I shoot, uh, I will not penetrate this tank, it's too difficult. However, 
The side armor of a Tiger II is much weaker. It's weaker than the value of penetration of my AP shell. So here, I'm just flanking him and I can shoot anywhere on his side and I will penetrate. So this is to illustrate the fact that tanks get different armor values depending on where you shoot and you will need to know what's your penetration value and it will give you an indication of if you can penetrate or not the enemy tank. Now let's take another example. I am facing a Tiger 1 and at this specific spot my penetration value is slightly superior to his armor value so most of the time I will penetrate if the RNG gives me a good uh, penetration value. However, if the tank is angled, his armor value will be higher and if I am trying to penetrate it, I will bounce most of the time even if I shoot at the same exact location. It's because his effective armor is better than his regular armor, so I will need to be much more lucky if I want to penetrate this spot. Now let's talk about a practical example of uh, some different armor values, it's called weak spots. The game will give you only one value for the frontal part of the armor of any tank, such as, for example, uh, this tank destroyer. H however, the real armor values, and I'm talking about thickness here, not effective armor, uh, it's different. So on the side of this tortoise, it's just average. The bottom part, well, let's say the central part of the tank, is highly protected. You don't want to shoot there. You will just uh, not penetrate. And the top left part of the tank, it's the commander's hatch, it's just poorly armored. The commander's hatch is a fairly common weak spot on tanks, uh, so is the lower glassy. But some tanks get some unusual weak spots such as a machine gun nest or in this case in the E100, it's the superior horizontal bar just above the turret. Don't shoot on the sides, only on the part that is above uh, the turret. Now let's finish uh, the theoretical part of this video. So after penetrating uh, the enemy armor, you have the possibility to deal damage to modules inside the enemy tank, such as the engine, but you can kill as well some crew members. You will damage modules and kill crew members if your shell penetrates enough uh, the inside of the enemy tank, and it will depend on where you shoot at. For example, if you're shooting at uh, the commander's hatch of an enemy, you will probably kill his commander. Or if you shoot at uh, the front of an enemy German tank, you will probably destroy his transmission and this will result in a damaged or a destroyed engine. And obviously, if your shell go through uh, the hull or the turret of an enemy tank, then you will deal some damage directly to the tank. So be careful with that because sometimes you will hit only the tracks for example so you could deal damage to the track module but not to the hull. Um, and sometimes if you go through both track and hull you can damage the module and the enemy tank so be careful with that. So just to clarify if your shell goes only through the tracks, uh, the gun or the spaced armor of an opponent you will not deal damage to uh, his tank directly. I will show you an example right now. I am now facing a Panther 4. This was prior to the 2.1 patch, which means that it was still called Panther 4 and he had a space armor only on the turret. You can see it around the turret. Now this tank is called the Panther 4 H and also gets space armor on his side. Anyway, if I shoot a AP shell and penetrate both the space armor and the turret armor, I will deal damage like I would on a regular tank. However, if I deal damage only to the spaced armor, so here I am shooting on the back of the spaced armor, there is no turret where I am shooting, I will not deal damage to the enemy tank. For those who don't know how a Ponder 4 looks, basically um, the commander's hatch is located at the back of the turret, so if you shoot behind it from the flank, you will not shoot at the turret. Let's take a closer look. So this is the enemy spaced armor from a closer look. If you shoot at it and only the spaced armor, no damage. Here you shoot at the turret anywhere and you can damage the enemy tank. But the Panda 4 or the Panda 4 H is not the only one to get spaced armor. The IS-7 for example is one of the multiple tanks that get a spaced armor around his tracks. If you shoot at it with no angle, basically since it's quite thin, you will penetrate it and the armor behind it. So no problem. But if you start shooting with an angle, 
your shell will lose a lot of penetrating value uh, because of the armor and then it will not have enough to penetrate the hull behind it. But the spaced armor doesn't uh, protect the bottom part of the hull and you can damage it with the exact same angle. Here I'm going to shoot at the spaced armor again and you will see I won't penetrate. So now you know how armor works in uh, World of Tanks. I'm just going to give you a quick recap. So basically your penetration is affected by the RNG, the distance and if you go through obstacles or not. And the armor is affected by the angle. So take into account those elements, it's really really important. Imagine that you are this E100 uh, driver, you don't want to show me a flat surface. So basically you are going to angle uh, your tank and your turret and here it will help you uh, bouncing some shots. If you over angle you will expose your side armor which is usually much weaker and you will give your, the opponent the opportunity to hit you even more easily. So you want to give the right amount of angle to your opponent. If you have a smart opponent that is only giving you a very strong and angled armor, uh, then you will have to shoot at weak spots or to switch uh, ammunition type if you want to damage him. So before learning techniques such as uh, side scraping or hull down, uh, you'll need to understand how your own tank works and how to angle it properly. Here, the IS-7 is an exception. It has a naturally angled armor, so you don't want to angle it yourself. Here, if he's facing me uh, straight away, uh, his frontal armor will be harder to penetrate. However, if the IS-7 angles himself his frontal armor, uh, then he will cancel his own natural angle and he will be much easier to penetrate. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned some new elements. The next tutorial video will be all about the different uh, types of shells. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.